So good evening everybody. Today is again 9.30 and we meet again. Today is the 91st session and we have two people talking so we will be completing 90 sessions today. And that's taken like what two and a half months of regularly working with all of you. The purpose of this uh, program has been from 22nd March onwards to keep people in a safe place and also to bring to them which we've started a new segment called She Inspires. He inspires, you inspire. It's about people who didn't give up or they created something in life that was really beautiful. And uh, today I'm presenting to you my own sister, that's Bhavna Kapoor. And uh, I really, 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 really thank her. Thank you, Bhavna, for taking in my invitation and accepting my thank invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, this is the second attempt, right? We did try doing going uh, before this and she said yes, and it didn't work out. So um, when the time is right, things happen. So it's, it's one of the most difficult jobs to introduce your own sibling. And today is very, very special. My mom is on this forum. She's watching her. I wish to God my dad was here. To watch this and to see her evolve into such a beautiful person. Um, I remember when I was very little and I didn't have a brother or sister. I would often tell my mom, I also want a sister. I also want a mother, a brother. But my mom would say, you're there. Why do you need anybody else? I'm giving you attention. And I would go to every temple, every place and actually uh, pray to God that I could have a brother or sister. My mom and my dad weren't really interested in creating another one. They were very happy <laughs> with one child. And I should have let it remain actually like this to be actually thinking. I could have been the pampered child all my life. But you know, destiny has a different way. And God says, okay, you ask for it, I'll give it to you. So... He granted me this beautiful sister. To be really honest, we have a fair share of fights. We are very different personalities, yet very same. For my dad, she was somebody who was everybody. I never stayed in the house. She never left the house till she got married. Different destinies for two people. Guys, can you all mute yourself, please? Thank you so much. So, for till she did not get married, she never left the house. And I was one who was parceled off to my grandparents' place right at six years of age. Who says two siblings in the same house have same destiny? <laughs> really? With her? It was a pleasure to have someone in my life who I could fight with, protect, scream, and do everything that I wanted to do. I can hear someone very loudly. No, you can mute everybody from your side since you're the host. I can, I can, but yeah. I'm requesting and that never happens actually. So I'm being very kind. Okay. So today I'm going to be interviewing Bhavna and we both sisters will carry you through her journey. I don't see my mom still here. Has she come? Give me a minute guys. I must get my mom. My mom is there online. Yes. Okay. So Bhavna, thank you so much again, once again for coming here. I would like people to know what your uh, professional qualifications are because this is one place I've never mentioned to anyone uh, their professional qualifications. It doesn't matter to me from what walk of life you come. What matters to me is that we've shared laughters together and some tears together and some fun together and that's why you're here. Thank you, Bhavna. Again, over to you. Thanks, Anadidhi. A great opportunity that you're giving me today. I'm really thankful. Thankful to you to be there in my life for someone who's been my pillar of support. As you mentioned, we've had our fights. We've had loads of fun together, loads of memories. And 
yes, absolutely grateful to God to have you as my sister. Um, I'm grateful for all of you who are joining the forum to listen to me today. I'm extremely grateful and thankful to all of you. It's my first one. So, um, and it's 12 o'clock at night out here in Singapore. <laughs> okay. As Anu Didi asked me, how am I professionally qualified? I'm actually an architect and I finished my architecture, started in 92, finished in 1997. Gosh, that's like 33 years back. Wow. No, 23 years back. Yeah. Long, long time. And uh, I worked professionally as an architect, as an interior designer for over a decade. I loved being in the field. It was just amazing. It was just walking into an empty house or an empty office and then doing it up and then, you know, bringing it to life. It was just absolutely amazing. I loved being there. So tell me, Bhavna, um, how has your journey been from being an art, from being an architect to an artist. But before that, I think a little bit around your life as to what made you actually take the line of architecture and why were you so interested in it? And I keep hearing you say, I love, love, loved it. What, what is it about architecture that really intrigued you when you were there? Um, you want to know the truth? Yeah. The truth was at one point I wanted to be a doctor. I realized I didn't study hard enough for my 12s. So I realized I can't be there. And uh, I said, why not just take up architecture? And actually I went for the entrance. I knew my friends who went in, prepared for the entrance examinations, who took training. And I had absolutely no idea that they were training institutes or um, you know, training centers that would train you for giving the entrance examination for being an architect. I just applied for it and I got into it. So it was, uh, though I knew that I either wanted to be an architect or I wanted to be into the pharmaceutical field or, you know, be a doctor. Doctor got chucked out. I looked into pharmacy. It didn't happen. I walked into architecture and I'm grateful to have been there, actually speaking. So are you saying that it was by mistake that you were there or by accident that you were there? You were not actually planning it to be like that? Uh, not really. It's not that I, I didn't have, I did have it in my mind, but I didn't do anything about it. As I sent, said, you know, I didn't go for any training for the entrance examinations, nothing. I had no idea about it at all. So I just walked in for you know, to get admission. And that is when I realized that it did have an entrance examination, which I wasn't even aware of before that. Wow. And how did you get in there? Without an entrance exam? Um, it was good. It was, it was good. Okay. So uh, tell me, Bhavna, how was, what was your journey right from being an architect to an artist? I was doing her interview. Okay, so um, in about, um, as I said, I worked for a decade and I got married during that period and my daughter came along. In about 2008, my husband got, uh, got a chance to move to UK. I was really excited about it because he was a shippy, which meant that the first time we actually got to stay together throughout the year under one roof because he would be sailing. And, you know, I would be juggling work between his sailing and, and my work. So I would sail with him for some time, come back and again do my work. So my daughter was one year old and we moved to UK in 2008. Now, before that, I was completely involved in my work. But once I moved to UK, I just mentally decided that as my daughter was so young, I didn't want to put her in a daycare. I said for a couple of years, let's just enjoy this and, you know, take a back seat or take a sabbatical and just give all my time to her and, and make the most of it in that way. And uh, 
during the course, of course, uh, she started going to school. Um, I found a couple of hours in between, so I would go once in a week for two hours for a course and come back. It wasn't easy actually moving to UK because uh, I'd never done work by myself. And as you all know, in a foreign country, you don't get helpers very easily, or you don't keep a helper, or you don't have a helper actually coming home for you. So, Bhavda, from all I knew from you know about you, and uh, because you're my sister, so I know very well that the best thing that you could actually create were not even the boiled eggs. You had never yes, got, I was really, I was really bad. Into the kitchen. So uh, <laughs> here you were going with a little one-year-old to UK, and I remember telling myself. How is this girl going to adjust? It's impossible. I mean, taking care of a one-year-old, not knowing how to cook, and then reaching a foreign land. And I was already in East of Europe at that time. And I remember calling you up and saying, you're doomed. And you were so happy that I'm looking at you from the side of my eyes and saying, oh my God, how is she going to manage? So tell us, how did you manage your cooking and your cleaning and taking care of the baby and managing your art and your architecture? Well, art and architecture were not, did not exist at that time once I moved to, moved to UK. The only thing that existed was house house. Okay. So all I had to do was play this game, you know, house house, where I had to learn everything, probably unlearn everything that I had learned before and starting to manage the house, which was not really, I which was not easy because I'd not done it before. I'd never done housework before. I had never, I'd never bought groceries before other than somebody telling me to buy a couple of bananas or watermelon or, you know, something along the way. I never knew what it meant like to get groceries for the house. I never meant, I never knew what it meant like to get a, to a breakfast done, lunch done, probably you're hungry during tea time, get a dinner done, cleaning up the house. Oh my, cleaning the Toilets, a nightmare, complete nightmare. You know, in fact, the funniest thing that I ever did is, you know, just a flashback. The first time I cleaned the toilet in UK, they do not have a trap on the, they actually have a dry and a wet. So I actually filled a bucket of water, which I had seen typically in India as the helpers do. And I took it and I threw it in my bathroom. Till I realized that there was no way that I could even, you know, the water would ever go down. So I had to sit back and collect the water. I was as raw as that. Really bad. You remember but, the story that we spoke about today afternoon about you and your utensils. How did you go about that? Can you please brief my audience on that? Yes. So when I, when I left from, you know, India, obviously I had just a limited luggage allowed. So all I had was clothes and clothes. My daughter's clothes, my clothes, and I think I carried one pressure cooker. That's all I had. So when I landed there, they were, it, it was just not us, but there were a couple of more families coming in. So I met another, another friend of mine, you know, whom, uh, my husband's colleague, and I met her over there. And we said, okay, let's go for utensil shopping. So the first thing that I had to actually do was seek her help. And she was 10 so years younger than me. So when I, even to, today, when we meet, we laugh about it. I actually had to ask her, what vessels do I really need to buy for my kitchen? It is, it is from there where I started because, you know, earlier, it's not that I never cooked, but every time that I entered the kitchen, it was more to make a fancy dish, a nice fancy cake, um, but never really cooked the regular dal, sabji, roti, had never done it before that. So the first time I had invited people home, I think I made for food for like, instead of 10 people, I made for 30 people. I had no clue on the proportions. But it's, it's been an interesting journey. And today my daughter loves to cook. She can cook morning, evening, night. She loves cooking. It has been because at that time, all I used to do was look at cooking shows so that I could learn to cook. So I think as a child, all she did was moving around me and seeing those cooking shows, which is probably influenced her to a large extent to, you know, probably pick up her stuff and cook today. Absolutely. Uh, Bhavta, you then took over to drawing rather than architecture. And I would like you to tell people what are the kind of assignments that you had done in India so that they just know what an amazing architecture you are, architect you are. And I can vouch for it because she's created some amazing stuff 
for me as well as for others. So just just talk about that little bit, your little journey of who you were as an architect. And then we'll take you to the journey of how she got into art and where her art is today. Thank you. Okay, I actually started my first project was my husband's house, actually. With, uh, <laughs> yeah, which, you know, at that Now, time, guys, you know, mom don't, called don't me. ever go and do someone's house or you're going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> and we were together in college. So his mom knew that we had, you know, we were together in 11th and 12th. His mom knew that I cleared my architecture. So completely grateful to her because if she wouldn't have ever called me to do that job, I don't think I would have ever, you know, collected a team, got people to do the job. Um, you know, there are always these people who walk into your life, who, who silently carve your path without even you realizing it. And extremely grateful for them to trust, for her to trust us. So it was me and another friend of mine, we walked in. And uh, that's where actually before that I was working in a company, but that was the first job that I did by myself under my name. And that is from where my life as an architect or an interior designer started. Did a couple of projects, did, um, did the Vindyas at the Orchid, that's the South Indian speciality restaurant. They used to be an, a restaurant on you know, Khardanda Road, which is Khardanda Road, no, I think close to Juhu. This is uh, Patio. Um, at one point, the company where I worked was involved in work in practically every five-star hotel coming up in, in Mumbai. And I got the privilege and the luxury to, to learn a lot from there. It, they had a, you know, a factory of uh, you know, manufacturing furniture downstairs. And it was amazing to see how furniture could be crafted, how each wood had different smell. But you know, even when I'm talking about it, it, it just feels like a different birth altogether because it feels so far off and I haven't done anything related to it actually for the last 13, 12, 13 years. Okay, so carry us through your journey of last 13 years. What did you do then? Okay, so we lived in London for a fair period of about six years and from there my husband got transferred to, to Singapore. So my daughter was going to turn just about seven years old and got her settled in school and it was a full-time school. She would leave at eight, come back by 3.30. I said, wow, great opportunity for me to get back to work. So I started applying to companies slowly and steadily. I called people up. They said, well, you cannot practice as an architect in this country. You need to give certain exams. Okay. Um, fine. So I said, okay, let me begin with an interior designer. That would be an easier way for me to just, you know, get in. Applied, applied, no reply. So I said, maybe my resume has a huge gap of, you know, now six years. Maybe I think I should study something. So I found an institute. Close How many by. jobs did you apply, Bhavna? I applied to about maybe at least a hundred jobs. And it was apply, apply, no reply to an extent. And I probably went for only one interview or two interviews. That's it. I did not even get a call back. It, uh -oh. it, it, was, it was as good or as bad as that. And um, even when I moved to Singapore, Singapore, actually, I followed the trend of not having a helper, of just having somebody as part-time coming and going. So there was still a lot of work to be done at home. And I still felt that I'm doing a lot of house house. And I said, this is taking a toll. I need to just walk out and I need to uh, do something for myself. Let's have some fun. So I joined uh, the same place where I was going and doing my short courses for interiors. I joined even courses for art. But my main aim to do was the interior side of it, where I was hoping to get a job. And they were the night classes actually from 7 to 10. And as I mentioned, I didn't have a helper then. My husband would travel on his job a couple of times. So I would carry my daughter into the lessons. And I'm very grateful to the teachers who actually allowed her inside. And there were times when she's attended my lectures. I picked her up, got her back home. As a seven-year-old, seven yes, tucked her in bed and off to school tomorrow kind of a thing. And, uh, but whatever I did there didn't really help me to get a job. But I walked into the art section and I said, okay, once a week, 
and it was fun. I started making friends. I started going out. To an extent, I even joined a piano class. I said, I have to do something. I did, you know, learn the piano for over a year. And I realized how my right side does not coordinate with the left side. I cannot make out any sound difference when I'm playing. So if somebody tells me, can you hear the G note and the A note? I have to just nod my head, but actually I cannot hear the difference. So fine, I finally quit that. I accepted it and I quit it. And I got into painting. I finished one year at the NAFA school. But you know, one thing I have to say, which is really, really good about these countries is that age is not really a barrier. You know, when I was in London and I went to that school that I mentioned once a week, I had a 71 year old lady who came for painting there. I have till today never forgotten it because it was so inspiring. She said, in my house, everybody is married. I've got my grandchildren. Now it's my time to have fun. So she used to come there and paint. And that's when you realize that, you know, age is just in your mind. You can do anything you want at any age. You just have to get up and do it and believe that you can do it. So I started the art journey actually only for fun for time pass. After that, my friend introduced me to this really nice place, which is where you can go and paint. I'm going to be completing four years there now, where you can go and paint whatever you want. So you, if you show them a subject and you ask them, can I paint this? They will tell you, yes, you can. And just because that coach tells you, yes, you can do it, gives you a sense of confidence and believe in yourself because somebody else is believing in you that you can do it. So you say, maybe I can really do it. And that is where I got into painting. That is where I started painting, but never with the mindset of selling. So I made, I made one and I would just go once a week even then. I never came back home and really painted. I would just sit there and do it. I painted one, second, third, collected a couple of them. And my husband started saving it on his laptop. And he went for a meeting to Thailand where he had used my paintings as screensavers. And uh, one gentleman who was sitting in a meeting looked at his screensavers and said, very nice pictures. So he said, no, these are paintings by my wife. He said, really? He said, yes, he had come all the way from Houston. And uh, he was so intrigued by them that he actually asked my husband to send those, you know, the couple of paintings that he liked, two of them actually. Then he, he had a business trip to Singapore. He came down to Singapore. He actually came home and we invited him over for dinner. My husband was very excited that somebody is going to be buying. I'd still not absorbed it that somebody is going to be buying. So there were two paintings he was looking at and he said, I might take one. We all had dinner, everything got done. And um, he said, okay, I'm leaving. And uh, you won't believe it. I didn't even make out the conversation, actually. When my helper came and told me, oh, congratulations, you sold your painting. And I was like, really? And uh, then my husband came from downstairs, went and left him, and he came and he told me, congratulations, you sold both your paintings. And I was like, really? It, it, it didn't even strike me in that entire conversation that he actually bought my and again, as I mentioned, extremely grateful to them, um, you know, for, for the kind of encouragement, for believing, for, for trusting, for picking up my work. Absolutely fabulous. Yes. Wonderful. So uh, that's really inspiring that, uh, you know, but one thing, tell me, Bhavna, uh, why did you ever think that nobody was going to buy it? Because I never, I never made art with an intention to sell it. I made, an, made the art just to have fun, you know, spend my free time in a valuable way. Uh -huh. without, so it was just like, uh, you know, in school, how you used to go for drawing lessons. I would go for drawing painting classes in school and uh, something like that, you know, which you're doing on a little bigger scale, you're going to college and, you know, you know, better institute than probably what you did as younger days. It was just that. So it was just about uh, uh, feeling more fruitful, feeling that I'm making use of the time that I have on hand. And uh, it was just purely for fun. So Bhavta, can you show us your drawings? Can you show us what are we really talking about over here? Yeah. 
because people haven't seen your journey through the drawings. So let's let's really look at those drawings and let people really understand what we are talking about here. Thank you. And Thank you. While, while, yeah, just when you're sharing, mm -hmm. if you can tell us if there is any quote especially that really triggered you or uh, made you feel that that's what you really want to do. If there is any person who kind of uh, uh, pushed you or anybody in your journey that you really feel that you need to acknowledge along with when you're just kind of looking at and sharing it. Thank you. Uh, Veer, I need your help to share the screen, please. <laughs> Uh, well, not really a quote, but all I can say is I have always believed in one thing. Do what you love and love what you do. I think that's, that's extremely important because during the course of time as we are growing up, our parents tell us do this. So we say, okay, let's do this and let's do that and let's do this. But somewhere along life, our husband tells us do this, so we do it. Our children tell us do this, so we do it. But I feel somewhere along life, we need to figure out what we like to do. And I think it's important to find time, however little it may be, for yourself to do that. Because it's a very fulfilling, happy feeling. You know, when you're doing something that you like doing, I think it's extremely fulfilling. It, it gives you a sense of happiness that, and satisfaction that nobody can take away from you. It's... And you feel more grateful to people than rather than constantly blaming. Thank you. Okay. This is some of my works that I will show you. And, you know, from where my journey actually kind of started. Guys, you have to see these. These are outstanding, amazing. Some of them really left me sitting down in my house when I was looking at them and saying, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This girl has got talent and probably is not even aware of it. Uh, I'm sharing some of my works. The rest of them, you can go on my Instagram and my Facebook account and have a look at it. So my journey actually started with these three moms. So this is the first painting that I actually created in, in this place that I mentioned, where I go in Singapore. And again, let me mention to you that there are people of all ages coming there right from a child to a senior citizen. Age is not a barrier. I'm mentioning this again because I have seen in India that typically, because I am an Indian, that every time that I come there and I, you know, tell, you know, when I'm hearing people, it's, it's an age in the mind which puts a huge restriction to what one can do. Age is not a barrier. It is we who create our own barriers in our own minds, in our own brains. Absolutely. This is the second one. This is the one which actually got sold out. And uh, this, was, uh, this was my second painting. This is the one that I mentioned, the gentleman from Houston who came down and picked it up. Extremely grateful for, to him. He's still my lucky charm. And before I post any painting, we make sure that I send the painting to him first. Wow. This is a girl with the umbrella. Uh, trying to show how brave she is, that she's able to walk down alone the streets, even in a rainfall. Uh, this one is beautiful friendships, actually. This is uh, the one on the right in the white dress is my daughter. And that's her best friend, um, who is a friend of my, who is a daughter of my friend. And we were together in, in school. And I met her here in Singapore. And then my, my daughter became friends with her. And for me, this meant a lot because it's like beautiful friendships. They're looking at a bright future and where friendships are so important, relationships are so important in life. And that is one of the areas which we kind of take for granted. This is another painting which has been sold, which has been picked up by the first gentleman. So these were the two paintings, the boat and the African woman. I don't know, I just took a huge fancy for these African women. I think they just look so gorgeous. They look so gorgeous, you know, that I just had to sit down and paint them. I painted a couple of African women and, and men actually down the lane. I just want you to stop there, Bhavna, for a minute. I just want you to know that people are come putting feedback and saying, wow, superb, that's amazing. 
and that's very nice that's beautiful beautiful painting is what they're going on even on the facebook and even over here just want you to know that they are just so beautiful continue please and if i could ask you a question before you go further can you go a few couple of drawings behind just when you having that child just a drawing before this yes any connection with you here uh I, I really don't know, but you know, every time that I've chosen a subject, I have to relate to that subject at that particular moment. And if I'm able to make that connection with that subject at that time, that is what I feel like painting. So, you know, when people sometimes tell me paint, paint my children or something, I, I've, I still haven't reached that stage because I need to somehow connect. And what, what in this drawing did you connect with? She's fearless. She's absolutely fearless. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Just wanted to know, can you go to the next one, please? What do these friendships mean to you? Um, I think friendships mean the world, not only to me, but they mean the world to everyone. In every relationship in life, there is a friendship. Be it sisters, be a mother and daughter. I think every relationship has to begin with a beautiful friendship. It... And, and that, is, that is what the meaning is actually of this. Beautiful friendships which carry on for generations to come. Any particular reason that there is a girl and a girl there, not a girl and a boy there? Just out of curiosity. No particular reason. Actually, it's never come to my mind. It's just that she was my friend's daughter, whom my daughter played with a lot. So, you know, it was, uh, it was nothing more than that. So... Just uh, another curious question. Why is everybody having their backs towards the audience? Okay, now, uh, well, at that particular time of my life, just, yes. you know, jokes apart, I wasn't confident on doing faces, to be honest. So for me, it was easier to begin by doing the backs of people than oh. doing, doing the faces at that stage. Because I was just starting out at that time. So it took me some time to believe and to be confident that I can do a face. Wonderful. Could you go to the next one, please, now? Thank you. Again, when you're looking at this lady, I see half a face. And she seems to be in very deep thought. Is there any reason that you connected to this particular subject? Okay, I particularly connected with... I loved it. This is so beautiful. Just I connected you know. with this subject because I feel that um, living in India, the skin color is so important, more important than what a human being is really. Everything just boils down to skin color. I have seen that in India all the time. The judgment is so high and uh, it's like we've already washed our brains with a judgment even before anything you know even before we know the person in fact even in my family everybody is extremely on the fairer side i was the only dusky skinned person and i had heard enough in my growing years of how dusky i am and i am not fair skinned so for me, when I looked at these women, or, you know, if, if I've done some men too, there was a huge connection somewhere trying to just show that how a person is beautiful from within. Beauty is not just skin deep. It's beyond. It's all, you know, it's just not in the skin color. Can you say that once again, very slowly for everybody who is watching you? That beauty does not lie in your skin color. It lies within your heart. What, as a person, what you are is more important than your skin color. Guys, isn't she gorgeous looking? Thank I, you. You know, you'll be surprised that, you know, if an Indian looks at her, if I put her up in an exhibition, and uh, if they see the paintings, an Indian typically does not like to see the dark-skinned women. They don't find them fascinating. Whereas if the woman is fair-skinned, they immediately come wait there and they say, wow, you will find um, a very, um, a typical Indian will probably look at this painting and just move ahead. 
they want the fair skin. Uh, well, there are some realities we need to accept. Not everybody is like that, but it is what it is. Okay, that's your experience. And one that's been my experience. That's been your experience. Let's go to the next drawing, that next painting. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at this and look at the happiness crawling in. Look at from, from slowly, from the backs being turned to the side faces and, and look at how real that is. And that's a celebration. Can you tell us what this subject is about? Well, though I could never play the piano, but I love music. And I feel when you dance and you sing is one time when, you, when you're just constantly smiling. I haven't seen anyone dance without a smile on their face. And I haven't seen anybody sing without, without that look of satisfaction and happiness on the face. So that is what I wanted to capture out here is, is again, you know, enjoy and, and love doing what you are. I mean, it's so important to, to like and to love what you're doing. I stress that again and again because I, I personally really feel it's important because I think if I need to go nine to seven all my life or 20 to seven all my life for a job that I don't like doing, it can't, it, it's the worst thing that can happen to you. Would that be the reason probably that you applied for 100 jobs and didn't get any? Mm. Just asking, just out of curiosity. No, I didn't get your question. I'm sorry. Could it be possible that you applied for 100 jobs and didn't get any because you were going to fall in love with what you were going to be doing? And you were loving what you were doing? Um, maybe yes. And also silently, to be honest, because I had done architecture by myself. As I mentioned, I had my own team at one time. Yes, Gauri, my sister is it. really amazing. This is someone on the Facebook saying, Gauri uh, Prabhu saying, your sister is amazing. So I'm loudly saying, yes, I know she's amazing. And thank you, Bhavna, really for accepting to come. Look at, look at the colors, guys. They're all beautiful. Look at the hands. Look at the nails. Look at each part of that. That she doesn't know how to play music, but she definitely has created music here. You can hear the music, can't you? Can't you hear the music that that man is really playing? If my father was alive and looking at this today, he would be such a proud man. Next drawing, please. This is the blue monk. And, um, uh, you know, they're kind of mixed feelings. When I was doing this, I was, um, I just loved how peaceful he was. I loved how, uh, you know, he was kind of thanking God. I felt that he was thanking God. And I don't know why I chose the color blue, but I just didn't want the mount colors. I just didn't want the, the regular orange and stuff. For me, just blue just meant calm. And I just wanted to reflect that in the blue mark. Wonderful. Beautifully explained. The piece of peace. And can we go to the next one now? Yes. This is the lady in red. <laughs> so is somebody who might thought was oomph, you know, kind of a thing. And uh, I love the attitude that she had. And that is why I actually painted her. Because of the kind of style and, you know, the attitude, the chicness. You so know. just getting very curious, Bhavna. If there was something this lady was saying, what would she be saying? The first thing that comes to your mind. Oh, I'm cool. I mean, you know, it's. She is cool. She's beautiful. Let's go to the next one. I want you to guys to see before you go to the next one. Look around the neck. Go back, Bhavna. Look around the neck. You can actually feel every bit of her neck. You can actually feel every bit of her pulse. Go to the next one. And that's my favorite. The next one which is coming. That's my favorite. This is celebration of life for me. Again, going back to the quote, do what you love and love what you do. For me, when I see the happiness on this man's face playing the drum, I mean, I, I don't think I can ask for anything more. I love this drum. I fell in love with him and I'm going to have him in my house. 
I love him. I mean, fact, <laughs> yes. I painted him only because of his face. He being in a trance, he being in a trance with life. He enjoying that moment of playing the mridangam. I mean, you know, uh, I wish our life was as joyful as this. And where, you know, everything that we do brings a sense of joy and happiness that, you know, is is like, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know. That, that's what the guy meant to me when I painted him. So for me, he felt, it, for me, it felt like a perfect celebration of life. And this, I also painted, you know, after my dad passed away. And um, for me, it was, um, he was, I think, 82 when he passed away. So for me, I wanted to say, yes, I'm very sad that he's not there with me. But I want to celebrate his life. At the end of the day, he's lived 82 years. So let it be a celebration of life totally. Why should it be just sad? At the end of the day, there have been such amazing, happy memories with him. And I want to celebrate those. Very well said, Bhavna. Just, uh, just so noticing right now, he's got a South Indian dress. That's the dhoti. Yes. And uh, my father was never so rugged and uh, no. uh, toned. But it's like I fell in love with this guy, his hair, his style. He's like, he's going to be in my house. Uh, okay, the next one, please. This is a flower girl. So, well, I just love the expression on her face where she's this, you know, a girl, a young girl. And... Uh, and with the flowers, I thought that was like such a beautiful uh, connection between the flowers and the girl. And I had to just paint her. I just Love want you guys to notice something. I don't think Bhavna has noticed this. First, the paintings had the back and then the side face. And this face is three fourths. Just wanted you guys to know that slowly, it feels as if the girl is ready to face the whole crowd. And that girl is sitting right in front of you. Three-fourths face out there. Wonderful. Okay, go on. The next one, this is my latest one. <laughs> this is like blurry, actually. This, is, this reminds me of my childhood, actually, when we used to be playing holy like crazy. You know, it used to be, we used to be waiting for days to play that. I've never played the festival ever after I have walked away from, from the place where I lived in my childhood. Absolutely amazing. I have loved that festival always. And for me, that was a connection with this lady uh, in a very subtle way, but uh, that is how I connected with her playing Holi. Wow. That is she's awesome. happy. She's looking at her friends, you know, waiting for her friends to come. She's already splashed with color. And uh, yes. This is my latest project that I've been working on. Lived in Bombay all my life. And I felt what better could it be than getting back to Bombay. So I also work with different mediums, not only oils, but I have during this period explored watercolors, inks. Um, I've also explored acrylic paints. It's, it's been amazing to see how, how these materials work and function. It's just absolutely fabulous. So this is one of my latest series, which I'm currently working on is Bombay Medita. Where we talk about flavors of Bombay, where it reminds me of Bombay. Go on. Now, I just have to stop you here. Uh, her daughter sat down and absorbed all this. All this. 13 years of Bhavna's journey was 13 years of Rena's journey. And please have a look what got created there. Please have a look, guys. Yes. Uh, she is 13 years old today. 
In fact, when I studied my watercolor course, I would come back home and uh, she sat with me and she asked me, would you teach me? I said, yes. And uh, when I actually taught her, she looked at me and she said, you know what? I think you should teach this to children. Why aren't you teaching this further? It is absolutely amazing. That's where I started taking classes at home where I would have a batch of max four to five people. Thanks to COVID, I haven't done any of that this year, but it'll happen. And I just loved teaching the children. You know, it, it is such a blank, clean slate that they work with. And it is amazing to see the kind of work that they come up with. It is fearless, no boundaries, and you see the strokes, you see the colors. I feel in the lessons or in the classes that I have with children, I learn more from them than what I give them. And there are times when I've had families coming home, when I've had the mother and two children come home. And you'll be surprised to know that the youngest kid in the block is the fastest to think and the best to work at. And the eldest member of the family, who's probably my age, are, are a little more cautious, are a little more reserved, are a little more thoughtful about what they put down on paper. A little more, um, uh, you know, when children paint, they don't think about whether they're coloring in the box or outside the box. I always mention it's more important how well you color outside the box than how you color inside the box. It's about how you make a change, how you change and mold your barriers and create something else out of it. So this is one of my daughter's paintings, which she has done in the last month, month because of COVID. She sits down sometimes and she paints. And I'm amazed at her skill, actually speaking because she's, she's done, sometimes she can put up work better than me. I'm being extremely honest and, and really fearless. This is in fact, uh, one of her favorite dogs, Luna, whom she's painted. It's my dog, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. This is um, about a couple of years back when I taught her watercolors. She had, uh, there was a drawing competition in school where she came up with this entire you must be 10 years old then. Yeah, must be around 10 years old when she sat and she did this. And she won the competition and her drawing is in the first in the front cover of the, of the school magazine. So this is all watercolors with mixed media. Uh, I haven't put up all my work so you can get onto my websites and have a peek. This is again one of the works of my daughter that she has been Wow. So currently I've been working on coasters, I've been working on mixed medias, I've been working with watercolors. I've been literally trying to find things and trying to explore them. I've still not reached that stage in life where I can say that I'm going to be sticking only to one material, which typically as most of the artists do. So I think I'm still raw there and still finding or searching or still, you know, um, trying to explore because there's so much there. So I don't want to put a restriction on myself at this stage to say, I want to use only one of you. Yeah. Uh, if you've completed the share, screen sharing, you'll have to pull that off so that we can see you more clearly. I just have last few questions before we go to the next uh, talk. Yes. So Bhavna, I'm really, really grateful. And I want you to tell people what is it that you learned during this journey? Because I'm sure you had a learning and just something that I feel like saying to everybody, this talent came down to us from our mom. My mom paints too. And she taught us one thing very beautifully. When you're sad, paint. When you're sad, sing. When my dad was very unwell, she would go leave him in the office like you leave a child to school 
and then sit down in the mall and paint. I never saw her ever trying to give up her life. I never saw my father ever screaming and saying, I will not be there anymore tomorrow. I grew up in a house where my parents had fights. They at times hated each other, loved each other, but they never gave up on us and they never gave up on each other. They always and always created something that was very beautiful. So Bhavna, what was your, what did you understand during this journey? Well, what I have understood during this journey is uh, on a very philosophical way, there are times in life when you feel you're going to be doing something and, you know, unknowingly you walk on another path completely different from what you ever imagined. I think people who are really lucky and should be grateful if they had a plan for themselves and they're pursuing exactly that in their lives. And the paths may change, they may cross again, but we have to, whichever path we go on, as, as my sister rightfully mentioned, in whatever pain my dad was, he always smiled. So I always believe that you need to take it with a positive attitude, go ahead and just pursue it, just do it. And Nine. opening new doors for you, because if you're not ready to open those new doors, or you're not ready to walk on the new paths made for you, you will not be, you'll be stuck where you are. It's the story of the three mice. So, you know, the mice and the cheese, I think. Nine yeah. years, he sat down. Nine years, he was incapable of walking or doing anything. And yet, I never ever heard from him saying, I want to give up my life. Never ever did he scream and say, oh, my pain is so much that I don't want to see you the next day. Never, yeah, ever. Never. If you learn how to live, and if I could have a father again and I take birth again, I would want to have a father like that again and again. Thank you so much. Uh, Bhavna? You had written something very beautiful that you said in the afternoon. Could you share that with us, please? Yes, I, I just wrote down in the afternoon what I really wanted to share. Um, I just wanted to tell people, you know, because many a times people have actually come to me and told me, oh, you left your architecture. So now you don't practice architecture anymore. Huh? What about your seat? What about this? What about that? But the fact is, you haven't walked with me. You don't know what my journey of life has been. Don't jump to conclusions. So for me, just a little message for everybody is, it's okay to begin nowhere. Take one step at a time and explore yourself. Give yourself the permission to find you. Only you can do it. Don't wait for someone. If you cannot do it for yourself, don't expect anyone to come and do it for you. You have to get up, stand tall, and take responsibility. And who said it's going to be easy? But at least at the end of the day, you will be happy, at peace. And most importantly, you will blame no one. Thank and you. That, that was really my, my message for everyone. And don't make age as a barrier because I know that there's so much talent hidden there in the houses. Um, you know, the children, the women, the men, everybody. I think India is so blessed with the kind of population we have. And if you look at it positively, every human being in that land is talented. Pick up yourself and you can do something. You know, I've had people on my sites who are not carpenters and I've seen them carving wood. If they can do it with no formal education, I think we who are educated, who've had a formal education, do not have a reason to say we cannot do it. That's Thank you so much. I would request everybody to put their questions in the forum rather than taking it up right now because I have another speaker waiting. And I also have uh, Binaifa waiting for us so that she could do uh, cowries, that is the, the for Bhavna as well as for Karen. Karen, cowries are uh, destiny reading with shells. And my friend does a beautiful job of it. So she's going to be reading for both my speakers, that is Bhavna Kapoor, and for Karen, who's going to come next. And uh, 
Bhavna, is there anything else you would like to say to anyone before uh, <clears throat> we call Binaifa? I would just like to thank everybody for being patient to hear me. It's, it's a privilege that I have so many people to hear me. It's my first time. And I'm really grateful to each and every one who have always encouraged me with everything that I put up. There's always a post of encouragement from my friends. I'm really grateful because that means a lot. And that is what helps me to pick up my next one and aim. Thank you so much. And thanks. Love you, Bhavna. Love, Love you, Bhavna. Love you. Amazing. And thanks for all her friends being here and supporting her. Thanks for all my friends being here and supporting her. Thank you. Okay, Binaifa, are you there, my dear? Yes, I know I'm ready. Wonderful. Can you do a reading for my beautiful sister, Bhavna Kapoor? Yes. Thank you, Bhavna, for the lovely session. I loved your art.